he journeyed to Medina. But first, to avoid their pursuers, they hid in a cave outside Mecca. When his pursuers reached its mouth, they found it covered by an unbroken spider's web, as here, and so were persuaded that no man could be inside. From this year of emigration, the hijra of the Prophet, Muslims date their calendar. Here, in Quba, a little way outside Medina, the Prophet made his first stay and built the first mosque, and he proclaimed his message. Make peace among yourselves. Share your food with the needy. Pray while others may be sleeping, and you will enter paradise. Three days later, he entered Medina. Men, women and children, all the people jubilantly welcomed him. Never had there been a day of greater happiness for them. The prophet has come, sang the young girls of the town. The prophet has come. Brotherhood remains to this day the hallmark of believing Muslims the world over. The first act of the Prophet was to bind the emigrants or muhajirs from Mecca and the helpers or ansar of Medina into a brotherhood. The helpers shared all their possessions with the emigrants. As the Muslims were being forged into a close-knit community, so the first major structure expressing their solidarity was raised, the Masjid al-Nabawi, the Mosque of the Prophet, and the five daily prayers were established. Fasting was prescribed for the month of Ramadan from dawn to sunset. Zakat, a percentage of one's personal wealth to be given in the way of God, was instituted and made obligatory. Shortly after this, the direction of prayer was changed from Jerusalem to Mecca. This historic event symbolized the founding of the new Muslim Ummah, different from the earlier Jewish and Christian communities. For as the Muslims were returning to the original message of Abraham, so in prayer they turned to the first house of God, erected by him. The Makkans, still determined to wipe out the new Muslim community, decided upon a military solution. On pretext of protecting a trade caravan, they sent a heavily armed force 1,000 strong towards Medina. The Prophet resolved, despite the small number of the Muslims and their lack of armor, to meet this threat boldly. At Badr, on the 17th Ramadan, a historic battle was fought, in which, by the will of God, 313 Muslims defeated the Makkan army. Seventy of the Makkan chiefs who had led the persecutions against the Muslims were killed. Others were taken prisoners and subsequently ransomed. For the first time in history, prisoners of war were fed and sheltered like their captors and treated humanely. In the third year after Hijra, a Makkan force of 3,000 marched on Medina. The Muslims, numbering only 700, met them just outside the city near Mount Uhud. The initial Muslim victory was reversed when a contingent disobeying the Prophet's orders abandoned its positions and exposed the main force. The Quraysh attacked from the rear, and some 65 Muslims lost their lives. But the Makkans failed to consolidate their success and achieve victory. They now planned a once-for-all assault to destroy the Muslims plotting with Bedouin tribes and with Jews and factions of hypocrites within Medina itself. In the fifth year, a force of 24,000 marched on Medina. The Muslims defended the city by a system of wide ditches. Here, after many days' siege, the Allied enemy forces, demoralized by failure to penetrate the defense, by dissensions amongst themselves, by lack of supplies and by adverse weather, were forced to withdraw. This proved a great victory for Islam. 
the believers could not be overawed by mere numbers. Medina was never to be attacked again. The Jews, the wealthier among whom lived in Khaybar, were always treated as equal citizens of Medina, but they constantly behaved treacherously and were now severely punished. But no subsequent generation of Jews has ever been held responsible for the misdeeds of the Medinan Jews. Rather, Muslims have always treated them with honor and justice. Next year, the sixth, the Prophet and his companions set out to perform Umrah in Mecca, but were stopped at Hudaybiyah. However, to such stature had Islam grown that the Quraysh agreed to a peace treaty. The Prophet returned to Medina without performing Umrah. The terms of the treaty, apparently humiliating for the Muslims, proved to be the means of their triumph. Formal peace gave non-Muslims the chance to see Islam in practice. As a result, large numbers of Makkans 